Lookalike Glue Radio. I am your host, Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach. I'm here to help you build a more profitable business faster. This is the podcast where you can learn how to create your own dream business so you, too, can live your dream lifestyle. I'm the founder and creator of the Dream Business Academy and the Dream Business Coaching and Mastermind Program. In today's episode, I am going to interview Frank Cottle, and Frank is from the Alliance uh, Virtual Offices Program. I had a, a couple of moments with Frank right before we're going live here, and um, this man is one busy man. I thought I was busy. Holy smokes. Frank, how you doing today? Doing just fine, Jim. Doing just fine. Thank you. <laughs> we were just uh, just having a chuckle how sometimes you find out you're, you're – you're actually scheduled to doing inter- an interview three minutes before it goes live, but it's okay because we're either both professionals or we're not professionals, and it's going to be good content anyway. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Let me, um, Frank. What I want to do, if it's okay with you, uh, I'd like to read your bio, and then let's uh, let's hear what you're up to. Okay. Sounds fun. Okay. Hey, folks. Um, Frank Cottle is the CEO of Alliance Virtual Offices, and he's chairman of the Alliance Business Centers Network. He's a recognized expert on flexible working, the virtual office movement, and third-place working. Prior to creating the Alliance brand, Frank successfully operated his own portfolio of business centers in multiple locations across the United States. Frank has spent the past 30 years delivering business services that are finely tuned to the workplace needs of startups, entrepreneurs, and growing SMBs. Over the years, he has worked with tens of thousands of business owners and coupled with a unique global management perspective, has become the go-to authority on flexible and remote work. Now, Frank, when did, so for the past 30 years you've been doing this? That's a long time. Uh, actually, we started this company in uh, 1979, uh, so it gives, us, it gives us about 37 years now. Wow. Now, in the virtual office space in 1979, I'm imagining that's not – Probably not what it means today. You know, I think virtual offices, I think of um, places where you would have shared office space. Is, is that right or is, or is that different? That, 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 no, that that's absolutely correct. Um, we started uh, our business uh, in uh, 1980, keep it simple. Uh, uh, and uh, we started as a property company uh, building very specific buildings to host and house uh, what you would refer to today as a classic business center or executive suite. Uh, and so we built a series of buildings across the southwestern U.S. for about a decade. We popped a new building out of the ground every 110 days for 10 years, so we, we were busy. Uh, and learned how to run business centers at that time. And um, the, a business center uh, combines people, place, and technology uh, and delivers those three things together uh, via a highly flexible service agreement rather than a lease and employment agreements, things of that nature that you would historically consider. Um, and we were pioneers in the industry. We were one of the first people into this this sector uh, and have just uh, enjoyed it and uh, ended up growing uh, over the years uh, from uh, – that portfolio, which we sold in '90, to another portfolio that was larger, about 195 centers, uh, 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 that we sold in, in 2000, to today's network of centers, which is run very much like uh, uh, in a business model like uh, Best Western Hotels, I guess you would think, okay. um, uh, where we have about 700 centers running in uh, 47 countries around the world today. And Alliance Virtual is a technology company that handles all the booking and reservations, um, meeting room requirements, virtual office requirements for a global customer base, seeking those services throughout our entire industry, not just throughout our own centers. So it looks like a miniature version of Expedia, if you will, for real estate, okay. uh, for office space, um, okay. where people... Uh, come, uh, seek out what their service they desire, and they buy it through our system, which then in turn uh, aligns them with the correct in-service provider who is part of our network or has agreed to our terms. And everybody's quite happy with the process. Uh, You can open an office. uh, Heck, Jim Palmer could open an office in 10 cities and 10 countries in 10 minutes. I use that system. And... uh, 
We even go so far as helping clients to register themselves with governmental agencies, setting up bank accounts, uh, work permits and visas, whatever is necessary to help a company establish itself. Well, that's so interesting. So um, it's not simply uh, office space with occasional use of a conference room. If you if you help people, because uh, I was wondering when you said um, it's uh, designed for the needs of startup entrepreneurs. I mean, a lot of times what startup entrepreneurs need is should I be a, an S corp or LLC or or you know bank the bank accounts? Uh, do I use Ring Central or whatever? It sounds like you're um, kind of a one stop shop for all of that. Well, we are, and in fact, we actually work with some of the. Uh, largest corporate formation uh, organizations in the U.S. uh, to help them with their client base. Uh, And we, in addition to that, we, through Alliance Virtual, we run a national registered agency uh, system uh, so that uh, registered agents, uh, uh, either entrepreneurs or uh, legal uh, law firms that need that service, uh, we can avail them of that as well. When somebody um, wants to do that, and, and, you know, so much of today, um, unlike in the 70s, you know, with the power of the Internet and, you know, phone systems, you can actually uh, create uh, at least, uh, I don't want to say visually because it's virtually visually, but, you know, you can make yourself look so much larger and (laughs) maybe so much more professional than you are. Uh, with the services that are available today, if somebody wanted to have you know multiple address locations, is it a ma- Are there long-term leases, or are you are you? Is it like a timeshare? Are there certain mm-hmm. amounts of space you get for a certain period of time? How does that actually work? Uh, all, all of the above, except timeshare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yes. Uh, each of our facilities, our, our average facility size, that um, uh, is around twenty thousand square feet. And within that, we have both private offices, um, uh, common air work areas uh, for people that want to just drop in and use a lounge for an hour or two, uh, as well as a variety of meeting, training rooms, conference rooms, things of that nature. Uh, the space is fully staffed, full clerical, secretarial, administrative, reception staff. Uh, and all of the IT is pre-built into the space. So all the telephony with live reception support, uh, massive, massive amounts of bandwidth are required in today's world, and so that's all available on a wireless basis. Um, and so it allows people to come in for the hour, for the day, for the week, month, six months, 12 months. Our average client uh, in our system actually stays with us about a little over four years. Uh, so while they have flexibility, uh, they can leave pretty much any time they want, um, they end up staying uh, a, for quite a long life cycle that's very similar to what you find in commercial officing. When you say um, working on the move and things like that, do you find a lot of your clients are people who are traveling a lot, or is it people looking, and I'm sure you're going to say yes all the above, but I'm envisioning traveling people who are, are account managers, possibly you know traveling salespeople, um, versus somebody who's just starting a business and doesn't necessarily want to work out of the third bedroom? Um, the Our industry in general, the customer breaks down, uh, the customer base breaks down into five core categories. The first is probably someone unexpected by you, and it's government. An awful lot of agencies in government use serviced offices and virtual offices in order to service their own agency's constituency. Um, thereafter, the next largest group is the Global Court Fortune 2000, um, some massive user of services from us. And they'll use it for branch offices, uh, for meetings, uh, for meeting rooms, uh, meeting support. Uh, we might set up a sales office structure that has a, a series of service and, and, and sales offices using virtual officing structures. Um, thereafter, you would say legal accounting and financial services professionals um, are, are large uh, customers within our system. Um, uh, local uh, entrepreneurial companies, marketing companies, uh, repping companies, etc. And then uh, finally, uh, the startups. Uh, startups that constitute only about 20, 25% of our customer base. Uh, and many of those companies have a short cycle and then they outgrow uh, what we do at the virtual office, but take office within 
permanent office space within one of our centers or managed office space uh, that we might be managing for them outside of the centers where we're still providing all the services, but it's their own individual space. So it's a complete um, ecosystem to help people uh, in business today that we've achieved. Uh, and the terms and the customer base is universal. Um, Frank, when someone's starting out, I'm thinking of, uh, well, not starting out as in today, but, you know, six months or a year, you're starting to get some traction. I think of some of the common things that entrepreneurs need beyond their initial skill set, you know, uh, legal, accounting, perhaps marketing. <clears throat> Are those services that you offer either by way of um, – you know, trusted alliance, or do you have those services within each of your facilities? Um, we have those services within each of our facilities um, <clears throat> so that we can make sure that uh, all of our customer needs are, are, are met, regardless of the flexibility requirements of the customer or whether they're a, a, a basic startup just trying to figure it out or whether they're a, a global Fortune 100 company. Uh, that uh, has to come into a, a city and do a project for six months. Hmm. And that might, that's interesting for you. I mean, how do you how do you judge the demand? I mean, do you actually have people on payroll, or or how does that oh, work? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes, we have quite a, quite a number of people on payroll. It, it's our obligation to provide these services. Um, but our industry has has grown materially uh, through the last few decades. Uh, uh, and is growing quite quite rapidly right now. If if you think of major trends in the world, think for a second about everything you've heard about the sharing economy. Well, what do we do? We share space, people, facility, technology. We're part of that process. You've heard about the gig economy. What is that? Well, contractors, uh, independent uh, uh, workforce people, um, those people use our facilities uh, uh, all day long. You've heard about contracting employers, major corporations and government, uh, switching from employment models from full-time employees to full-time contractors. Well, when they do that, those contractors go out in the field, generally with a stipend, to take care of their own officing needs. Now, where do they end up? They end up in our, in our industry. So all the major drivers and changes that we're going through now in the upcoming new flex economy uh, <clears throat> that we're going to be seeing in the next 10 years um, really our industry and, and hopefully our company is well positioned to uh, deal uh, with those changes and, uh, and hopefully be one of the leaders in, in driving them. I know you mentioned IT earlier. Um, how about things like social media? Do you have people that are proficient in that, or is that getting into too much of the minutia personally for each business? No, we actually, uh, uh, as part of our capabilities, we own a digital agency, a uh, uh, digital media agency that uh, provides uh, web services, SEO, SEM, PPC, social media services to our customers uh, and to our industry at large. Um, and it's one thing to say I need uh, somebody to blog for me or to uh, help me post things and to learn about social media. And it's another thing to fully create and execute full strategies for companies. And that's really what we do. Hmm. That's, that's And so, um, and you may not want to answer this, but how do you provide on a, on a grand scale like this with uh, so much expertise within each virtual office? But, Man, that, that's such a huge undertaking, it appears to me. And people can kind of come and go or, or you know, in, in the or, or is there some kind of a minimum commitment if somebody wants to be part of that community? Or I'm still having well, a hard time wrapping well, my hands around that. Um, yeah, generally a, a virtual office uh, customer uh, commits to a six- or 12-month rolling term. Okay. And as I said, uh, uh, often our average customer stays with us for, Four years plus. Uh, so um, <clears throat> the ability to develop a, a relationship with the client, to see them through different growth cycles that they might have. And remember, some of the comp companies, a big percentage of them that come in are quite large to begin with, um, uh, is, is pretty easy. 
uh, and it's all done at the local level with the local management team at the local center or with our virtual teams that virtual business managers that uh, work with our clients to help them grow their business. When you um, started this, was this one of the first companies, or this sounds like probably your second or third company, I'm guessing, from the from the scope of it? How far back do your entrepreneurial roots go? Oh, boy, boy back to about 1970. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I started in the yachting business, uh, racing and sailing uh, big uh, racing sailboats around the world. Uh, wow. Did that for about 10 years, and uh, it qualified me to do nothing but have fun. Um, so I, 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 I've always tried to, to build businesses that uh, I just found a joy in, in working with, and, and that's that's really what we've done here. Um, uh, we've we've had an iteration of companies that have all been in the same industry, uh, and we've tried to change our business model or the companies that we're running uh, to to match and lead the industry always. So uh, um, we don't like getting up every morning and doing the same old thing the same old way we did it yesterday. Uh, so we're very much still, I think, an entrepreneurial young company today, even though we have uh, quite a history within the industry. Do you find that um, – How would you say you're uh, a, a real estate company that offers services for small business owners, or would you say you're, you offer services to small business owners and real estate is a necessary component of that? Just, just curious. I, I, it would absolutely be the latter. We are definitely a – technology-driven services company that has uh, determined how to use real estate much more effectively, and that's one of the products that we deliver. Uh, Mm -hmm. People, place, and technology, those three things combined are bundled into a single product is what we do. You know, when I started in um, 2001, it was getting a little bit more acceptable, but it still wasn't 100% um, um, cool to say you had a home office. You know, there was a t- there was a little period there where it went from being oh you don't have a real business to and yeah. now you know it seems to me having a home office is pretty darn cool for a lot of people. But um, when you started um, in, in the seventies, I mean that seems to me um, to be pretty appealing to to instead of going out and getting your own space and everything that goes with it. Were th- how has your business changed from the 70s to today when everything is just so virtual? Well, I, I think when we started our business, um, <clears throat> that our biggest challenge was explaining to people and having them understand what we did. Uh, the elevator speech got kind of challenging, if you will. Um, but as technology has changed, as lifestyles have changed, uh, generational changes in the way uh, people want to work today versus in 1970 or 80 or 90, um, uh, have all brought um, a a lot of focus on flexibility in the workplace, concepts of community in the workplace, uh, the absolute capability of doing your own thing when you want, where you want, how you want. That uh, really is the way we're living today, and I think it's going to become even more so in the future. What if I'm curious about what you have found? Two things. What's the number one challenge that new? Because I, I deal with a lot of new entrepreneurs and, and small business owners. What's the biggest challenge they're facing today um, versus you know you got a, a big history? I'll just say 30 years ago. What's what's what has changed dramatically? Nothing. Um, uh, I think the same challenges of knowing what you're going to do and and being prepared to do it. uh, It's one thing to have a plan. It's another thing to be able to execute it. I don't think that's changed. Uh, Access to capital is always a requirement for business growth. I don't think that's changed. And the fact that everything changes today and will again tomorrow hasn't changed either. So flexibility, yeah. the, the need to have a flexible business plan, even that it keeps you on the right path, uh, is critically uh, important. Too many business plans say, oh, I'm highly flexible. What does that mean? Well, it means I pivot every week. When what I did last week didn't work, I do something different. And that, that's <laughs> not the staying on the path exactly. Um, so access to capital, you know, good good execution capabilities, uh, flexibility that still keeps you on the path. Those are key elements that I see as, as 
having been important in 1970 and uh, are important in 2017 and will be equally important in 2017. Would you agree, uh, I'm 58, I, I don't know if we're a similar age, or, but would you um, agree that the speed at which business is being done and or the speed at which things are changing. I mean, you know, 15 years ago, there wasn't Facebook and, and YouTube and all the different social media challenges. And, you know, I, I'm pretty sure 15 years ago, there was this thing called a modem, you know, a dial-up modem. And um, I think things today just seem to change so rapidly. You know, what's what's in either in style or, or appropriate today is, is, I mean, literally 24 months from now, it'll be something completely different. Uh, it, it will be something different, uh, but I don't think completely. I, I, I think if we look over a period of time from uh, the late 60s through today, we see a, a very much a, an, an accelerating process, but it, it's on the same path. Technology has been a driver since the end of World War II. It's just the pace at which it's advanced that's changed. Um, things such as communities... Um, heck, I lived in a nice community, and we had community activities. We actually had friends we saw uh, back when I was young uh, <clears throat> instead of someone that we uh, worked on a computer with and, 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 and looked at what their posts were. Um, but the concepts are all the same. It's just the delivery method that's changed. Uh, and so I, I don't think, again, I, 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 I hate to say, think, you know, all things change, but all things remain the same. Um in many respects, it's just the way we deliver things that's changed, um, but not the core that's important to us uh, overall. Um, you know, what's the purpose of business? To service people in such a manner that you can profit both the buyer and the seller. Or what's the purpose of create, creating a community to strengthen the work of those around you and to have advancement uh, on behalf of the entire group? Um, none of those things are, are too different today. Uh, just some of the brands are a little different. Yeah. I don't know. It seems to me there's a lot more uh, shiny objects flying by, too, Oh yeah. by, by oh, way the, of distraction. The, 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 the acceleration uh, in, in the delivery of vehicles is absolute. Uh, and I, I think if you were to, to, to say that maybe the thing that has changed is it's so much easier today. I can create an app uh, over the weekend uh, and if I can get it launched and I can get it followed, I've got a business. Where in 1970, that was pretty tough. Um, uh, so the ease with which people can enter business the, is, is so much better today. And that spawns a lot of new creative ideas for products, uh, certainly. And, 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 and that's, that's, I think, a good thing for us all. But it also creates a bit of uh, confusion. Um, there are so many choices an entrepreneur has today that oftentimes the uh, classic analysis paralysis of decision making keeps people from from doing what they could do if they were sitting on an island by themselves and only had two options. Yeah. Well, I've, you know, it's been an interesting uh, an interesting conversation. I'm going to call it a journey. It's an interesting journey because I think of um, virtual offices and. Here I am talking with somebody who's who's been doing this for 30 years with actual brick and mortar places. Not it's not just a a phone service and you know some kind of virtual presence. You actually still provide that, and it's uh, it's really interesting to see that there's still a, a, a huge growing need for that. It's been uh, fun getting to know you, Frank. Thank you very much for uh, your time today. Well, thank you. If you you need to learn a little bit more, you can just go to AllianceVirtualOffices.com. Uh, and you can see exactly how to open, like I say, 10 offices in 10 cities in 10 countries in 10 minutes. It's very, very easy to do now. See, you said earlier it's a little challenging with your elevator commercial. I think that's a good one right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go, well, I'll start using that one then. <laughs> I'm a marketing guy, so I picked right up on that. That's, that's I think that's a that's a winner right there. So, yeah, we, we, Frank, we thank can you call, so much. call it the, ru the rule of 10 in business development. Yeah, thank you so much for your time today, Frank. I greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. And we're done. Frank, thank you so thank much. You. That was uh that was really interesting. I hope it wasn't too painful with me being ill prepared as I was. Uh, no, I but think it was <laughs>
not not a problem at all. Uh, not a problem at all. It gave me the opportunity to try and uh, think on my feet rather than than have some sort of script to follow, which I actually think is better. I abhor those. I do a hundred interviews myself a year on the other side of the mic on your side, like you're doing. And when people send me these scripts, like every single word is scripted. I, I as quickly as I can as a guest in a nice, polite, informative way, I move them right off of that because that is so boring. So many people starting podcasts today, but. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. I'll 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 uh, record the uh, a proper beginning and, end, and ending later, and uh, we'll put this together. Probably be about two weeks or so, I think, before it goes okay. out. Okay, that okay. sounds great. If we can ever help you, uh, if you need, t- you know, ten offices in ten countries, whatever, let us know. You know, we're, we're well. Wait a minute, there. Ten offices, ten countries in ten minutes. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, so <laughs> let us know how we can help you. All right, Frank. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Take care. Bye bye.